Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to Thoughts on Things. Today we're going to be going over some of my favourite and most used apps of 2020. And just before we start, it's worth remembering that I've tried to highlight apps that would be useful to all, but obviously because I'm a designer, there may be a slight bias on some things in here. Anyway, with that in mind, let's get into it. So first up is Evernote. Now, for those of you that haven't heard of Evernote, it's basically the ultimate digital notepad or filing cabinet. I've been using this app now for about 10 years and it just keeps getting better and better. I've used it since uni and if you're already using apps like Notion or OneNote, it's definitely worth checking out Evernote. The main benefit is that it syncs with all of your devices and all of your notes and files to the cloud so you'll never lose anything and you can access them from any device whether Windows, Mac, mobile or anything basically. I use Evernote for literally everything. To-do lists, shopping lists, travel ideas, house ideas, design ideas and of course all of my YouTube ideas and notes and all of my work stuff as well. You can share notes with others, convert them to different formats, and even create a work team on Evernote. Imagine combining Dropbox and OneNote into a single app, and that's basically Evernote. Just to give you an example of how it works, here's a quick demo. So here, all I'm doing is just creating a quick blog post. So let's call it Into the Wild. I'm just going to drag a photo in there as well, just to show you guys how it embeds stuff. And we'll just put a little bit of text here below just to highlight some of the maybe the main chapters of this blog post. So maybe these are different continents. So we can say North America, maybe Europe. And it's not a continent, but let's just put South Africa in there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to edit some of this text as well here. Just bold a couple of things so you guys can see. This is basically just a super simple word processor. And let's just go ahead and drag that post or that note into our travel notebook, which as you can see, I've already set up here on the left hand side. And then let's just delete that other notebook as well. So we have two notebooks. Also, what I wanted to show you guys is just how this looks on the iPad. And actually, I found myself more and more writing notes on the iPad and then editing those on the laptop. So, for example, let's just go ahead and, and write a, a simple shopping list. Now, doing this, I'm just using Apple's new Scribble feature, which is pretty awesome. If you guys haven't used it yet, I'd recommend checking it out. It's essentially just like writing on paper, but with your Apple Pencil on your iPad. And all I'm doing here is just simply writing a shopping list, which, to be honest, is a much more intuitive way of doing it than typing something out. And if you just leave your iPad on the side in the kitchen or somewhere you're going to remember this, then that's probably the best thing to do. So here I've just switched back to the computer. I'm just going to edit this list up. You can do all of this on the iPad as well, but I'm just showing you guys so you can see how it syncs across devices. We'll do a little checkbox. And let's maybe also add some tags. Now the tagging system in Evernote is brilliant. I really recommend you get into that as well. It just means that when you start searching through your notes and categorizing them, it just makes Evernote that much more powerful. So we'll just create a few tags in here. Get that in there like that. And that's probably good enough for now. Any final tweaks? Don't think so. Just to show you guys, you can also do various different things with the notes as well. So this menu will let you share it and export it, of course, to any different format. And guys, that's pretty much it. And that's Evernote. Go check it out. Next up is Whereby. Whereby is a new browser-based video conferencing app, and it's free for up to four people on a single call. What I love about Whereby versus other conferencing services is that it's just so blisteringly simple to use. When you create a room, that URL basically becomes your personal meeting room that you can customize to be public or private, depending on your settings. Whereby also works across multiple devices and browsers and has a brilliant screen share as well as record functionality as well. Basically, it's got everything you need for video conferencing. 
I've used Zoom for years, but lately, due to the amount of people using it, just because of the pandemic, it seems to be way more glitchy, not to mention it's more complicated to use. I thought I'd just walk you through a couple of the menu options. So at the top left, as you can see, I've got a URL thoughts on things, and there's two out of four of us in the room. And then over at the bottom, you've just got the usual sort of options. So options to mute or unmute my microphone and video, options to share my screen, send chat messages, see who's on the call, and also just leave the call as well. There's also different options you can do to rearrange videos and have picture in picture as well. So whereby is great, definitely go and check it out. I really, really rate it. The next app I wanna show you guys is an app called Numi, which is quite possibly one of my favorite apps of 2020. It's essentially a free and powerful calculator app and converter. And you can do real time currency conversions, length conversions, and basically conversions of any type of units to any other type of units. As well as just basic numerical sums, it's also great at just working. It's also great for doing basic numerical sums as well. It's great, you need it, go get it, you heard it here first. So once again with Numi, I'll just show you a quick example here. So all I've done is just pulled up my recent calculator so you can see some of the things I've been looking at or converting or calculating. And let's just add a new line on here. And what should we do? Let's just do um, 800 meters in miles, just so you can see how that comes out. It's pretty simple. 1.6 kilometers in miles. And let's just show you a currency conversion as well. So that's new me guys, it's great, check it out. Now most of you would have heard of WeTransfer. It's a web-based app, I'm assuming that a lot of you have probably used already, but I'm putting it on the list for those who haven't. It's basically a file transfer app for large files that you can't send via email. The upload and download speeds are ridiculously quick, even if you have a slow internet connection. I use WeTransfer pretty much daily to send files to clients, and it's also free up to a certain file size, so definitely go and check it out if you're looking for something like that. So just a quick tip when you're using WeTransfer, always make sure you click the link option. I think link is a lot cleaner. And all I'm doing here is just putting in sending from me to, to me, just writing a little note to myself, which seems appropriate. And then all I'm gonna do is just, once I've done that, hit transfer, and just to show you guys, I don't even have the quickest internet at all here, but as you can see, just how quickly this takes off and uploads. It's just super, super quick. And even for large files, this tends to be the sort of speed that, that it uploads. And so that's done. And then you just have the link there that you can use to share with whoever you want. And finally, amphetamine. I absolutely love Max, don't get me wrong, but one thing I found frustrating at times is the overly zealous power saving modes that put your laptop to sleep even when it's plugged into the wall. Amphetamine basically bypasses Mac's native power saving modes and provides way more customizations of how you can use your power. So you can set particular sessions of one hour, two hours, or just permanent, and basically it just makes sure that your laptop doesn't go to sleep which is brilliant if you're trying to download large files overnight or trying to basically do software updates where otherwise they would stop halfway through. And I'm just going through the menu options here so you guys can just see the different things that amphetamine can offer. But that's pretty much it. That's amphetamine. Really, really cool app. So guys, those are just some of my favorite apps for the Mac from 2020. Let me know what you think in the comments and what your favorite apps are. I really want to hear if I'm missing anything really cool or interesting that you guys have found or discovered. That would be awesome. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more.